Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 27th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to check out few more string functions and the first method that we're going to have a look at is the isUpper function and this function checks whether all characters uh, in a string are in uppercase or not, right? So it's a similar method to isLower. The only difference is that the isLower method checks whether all characters are in lowercase or not whereas the uh, is upper method the one that we're going to check out right now checks whether all characters are in uppercase or not right so i'll create a string object first and i'll call it str1 and i'll give it the following text have a nice day right and as you can see all the characters are in uppercase and i'll press the enter key to create my string object and i'll execute the is upper function by first typing in the name of my string object which is str1 and then follow that up with a period or the dot operator and then the name of the function which is is upper and then a set of empty parentheses right because this is a function so we need to have parentheses after the function name when i press the enter key i see true as the result and that's because all characters in the string are indeed in uppercase right and uh, the next method that we're going to check out is the len method or the length function in python and this function returns the number of characters in the string. So to execute the length, uh, wait a second, let me get my cursor here. So to execute the length method on, uh, you know, the str1 object, I'll type in len first, that is len. And then within parentheses, I'll type in the name of my string, which is str1. When I press the enter key, I see 15 as a result. And that's because there are 15 characters in the string. And we can check, we can confirm that. So the word have has four. And then the alphabet A takes the count to five. Nice has four more characters, takes the count to nine. And then day has three characters, takes the count to 12. And then we also have three space characters in between. So the total count is 15. And that's why the length object, oh, sorry, the length function returns uh, 15 as the answer, right? And uh, the next method that we're going to check out is the lower method. And uh, this method, you know, changes all the uppercase characters in the string to lowercase characters, right? So if I would execute the lower method with the string str1, I'll type in the string object name first, which is str1, and then lower, which is the method name, and then follow that up with a pair of empty parentheses. And there you go. I see the same string, but this time I see all characters in lowercase, right? So the next method that we're going to check out is the else strip method. And uh, this method removes characters from the left side of the string. And that's why it's called else strip. And uh, it's actually a very useful function. So I'll just demonstrate it to you and then I'll talk a bit about it. So I'll change the value of my string object str1. And what I'll do is I'll have a few exclamation symbols. Let me have like seven of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can have as many as you want, but you know, I'll, I'm just for the sake of demonstration, I'm having seven. And uh, then I'll have, uh, you know, some more text in my string like what's up dudes, right? And I'll press the enter key to create my uh, string. And if I would execute the, let's say I want to remove all these, you know, exclamation symbols from my, uh, from my string. I just want the text what's up dudes, right? So as you can see, these exclamation symbols are present on the left side of the string. So I can use the else strip method to remove all these characters. So the way I'm going to do that is I'll type in str1 first, and then the method name, which is else strip. And then within parentheses and uh, single quotes, I'll pass the exclamation symbol, right? When I press the enter key now, I just see the text WhatsApp dudes. I don't see the exclamation symbols. And if these symbols were present on the right side of the string, instead of being present on the left side, then the else strip method would have done nothing. You know, it would have returned the string as is. But since these were present on the left side, you know, as a result, we got, you know, the, uh, you know, characters that are followed by the bunch of exclamation symbols, right? And, uh, you know, the counterpart of this method is the R strip method, which removes characters from the right side. So let me demonstrate that function to you guys too. So I'll change the value of the str1 string object again. I'll change it to something like this is so cool. And I'll follow this up with a few exclamation symbols as well, right? And uh, then to execute the R strip method, I'll type in the string object name first, just as I did with the L strip and the string object name is str1. Follow that up with a dot and then the name of the function, which is rstrip. And uh, within uh, parentheses, I'll type in the exclamation symbol within single quotes, right? Because this is the character that we wish to remove. And when I press the enter key, I just see this is so cool and I don't see the exclamation symbols, right? So the next method that we're going to check out, the last one in this tutorial is the upper method. And what this function does is it changes the case of all characters to uppercase, right? So it's the counterpart of the lower method. And if I would execute that method with the string uh, object str1, 
I'll have to type in the object name first, follow that up with the function name, which is upper and a pair of empty parentheses. When I press the enter key, I see this is so cool and the exclamation symbol, of course, you know, those are special characters, so their case cannot be changed. So they're returned as is, right? So I hope you guys had fun watching this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are going to try to wrap up our discussion on string functions, and then we're gonna check out some more interesting stuff in Python. So I hope you guys are having fun in this course, and you may subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.